Okay, so in this problem we're told rays of the sun are seen to make a 33 degree angle to the vertical beneath the water. At what angle above the horizon is the sun? So uh, the first thing you always want to do uh, is draw what's going on. So we can imagine that the sun, I know I drew it uh, right up here, but you can imagine it's right here, right? So right where the sun is emitting this light, and we know the light is going to travel, and it's going to enter this water. And so we know the angle that underwater to the vertical is going to be 33 degrees, right? The angle that this uh, beam of light, when it enters the water, uh, it's going to be 33 degrees to this vertical right here, okay? And so what we're trying to find is the angle above the horizontal, right? This beam of light is from the sun. So what we're trying to find is this angle theta right here, right? Because we can imagine the sun is right here. Uh, it's shooting this beam of light. And so what we're trying to find is this angle theta. Uh, and yeah, so uh, in order to do this, what we're going to be using is Snell's law. So let me talk about what Snell's law is first. So basically Snell's law is written as this. N1 times the sine of theta 1 equals N2 times the sine of theta 2. So uh, first let's talk about what N are. So N is the index of refraction. It's a different value depending on the type of fluid. So air has a value, water has a value, each type of fluid has a different value. Uh, it basically alters how much light is going to bend in that material, or sorry, in that fluid. Uh, and so it's different value for each of these. So since we're dealing with air and water here, uh, we're going to write down their values. Uh, the index of refraction for air is 1. Uh, for water, it's 1.33. So... Uh, yeah, so those are what you, uh, you're going to need to know that. Uh, let's talk about what theta 1 and theta 2 are now. So theta 1 and theta 2, generally you say 1 is your initial scenario where it's coming from. So in this case, you have 1 right here, and then this would be your 2. So initially it's coming from the air, uh, and then it's going to be entering the water. So uh, your theta 1 is this angle right here, theta in scenario 1, right, or in, in the beginning. Uh, and then this would be your theta 2. So we call these the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. So the angle of incidence is this theta one right here. It's the angle to the vertical or the normal that your beam of light is going to be making. So theta one is this angle here, angle of incidence. Uh, and then you have your angle of refraction right here, uh, which is the angle when it enters the water, what that beam of light, right? Because it's going to change direction as a result of entering an, a new medium. And so this is what we call theta two, your angle of refraction. And so uh, notice what we're trying to find is theta here. And so how can I find this value theta using Snell's law? So if I look at this, okay, I know that theta, we know that theta plus theta 1 is going to be equal to what? So this plus this, notice that it's going to form a 90 degree angle. Because this goes up to our angle, and then this goes to it to the normal. So you're basically going to the horizontal to the normal, which is 90 degrees. So these two angles add, added up have to equal 90. Well, keep in mind what I want is this theta value. So it's going to be equal to 90 minus theta 1. So if I can get theta 1, uh, I'm just going to take 90 minus that value, uh, and then it's going to give me the angle to the horizontal. Okay. Um, and so what I can solve for is theta 1 using Snell's law. So what we're going to use is this equation. Uh, all we got to need, uh, need to know is n1, n2, and theta2, uh, and then we'll get our answer. So n1 is, right, in scenario 1, what is the index of refraction? Well, it's 1. Theta1 uh, is what we're solving for, right? n2 is uh, the index of refraction in water, 1.33. Uh, and then theta2 is the angle of refraction right here, 33 degrees. So uh, all we got to do now is solve for theta1. So uh, we have 1 times the sine of theta, 1, right? 1 times anything uh, is just still that value. So we don't need to write that. Uh, it equals n2, right? This is n2, this is n1, times the sine of theta 2, which is 33 degrees. Uh, and then you would just take the, uh, right, the arc sine of both sides to get rid of this sign. So we have the arc sine equals 1.33 uh, times the sine of, yeah. So 
theta one, what we're solving for, we just took the arc sine of both sides, uh, and then you're just taking the arc sine of 1.33 sine of 33. So let me plug this in my calculator, 1.33 times the sine of 33. Then I'm going to take the arc sine of that value. It's going to give me a value equal to 46.42 degrees. So now we have our theta one. Keep in mind, we want the angle above the horizon, right, which is this theta here. So what we do is uh, 90 minus the value we just found, so 46.42. So go ahead and plug this in your calculator. You will get that theta equals 43.58. So uh, you can round, I'm just going to do 43.6. You can round however you'd like. Just make sure you do it in the way your teacher likes you to. Um, and yeah, so 43.6 degrees, that's going to be the angle above the horizon, right? The horizontal, right? Because the, the horizon is just this horizontal line right here. Um, that, right, the angle is the sun, right? Because we assume the sun is directly right here, emitting it from this. So that's why it's theta there. Uh, and yeah, so 43.6 degrees, uh, that's going to be your answer. Just a quick rundown. So we just use Snell's law to find this theta one. And then I knew if I had theta one, uh, I could solve for theta, right? Because 90 minus theta one equals theta. So we had to find theta one, right, by using Snell's law and just recognizing uh, the different values, right? So n1, n2, and theta two, uh, and then we could solve for it. Uh, but yeah, so 43.6, uh, that's going to go ahead and be your answer. And hopefully you found this video useful.